What's up? It's Rocky from the Driver Era, and I'm gonna walk y'all through how I made low. Ah, hey, for Rocky? Yeah. There you go. Dang, look what we got here. My old guitar tech has like bad knees, so he decided he doesn't want a tour anymore. So he's like, I want to build guitars. And he's like, Can I send you one? I was like, All right. I haven't had a new guitar in a while, actually. It's kind of exciting. It's like, Where's my Christmas present? <laughs> Shit. That's pretty sick. It's like some Prince shit right here. Wow, this is sick. I kind of made this track over the process of maybe like six months, because sometimes when I'm making songs, I'll like throw down an idea and I'll kind of forget about it or I'll like make a little voice memo. So I kind of kept coming back to this and, and, and messing with it. If I remember correctly, I started just with these chords on the guitar. I had the song slower, a lot slower. So if you listen, I played it at like 1.30. So it kind of sounds fucked up, which I liked. When I sped it up, now the chords are like all wobbly and shit. Phases out, uh, and even on the so that's on the verse and on the chorus. I actually think I messed up a chord. But yeah, I think that's it. It's super subtle, but I was like, I kind of liked it. Like, let's just plug this in and play those chords and see how it feels. Damn, that actually feels pretty good. When I do guitars a lot, I like to double it and put one in each ear and it makes it really wide. So I did this one. This one I'll do like left ear. All the way on this pickup. And then I'll like double it, put it in the other ear. Damn, I like this guitar though. Bubble coming in clutch. Depending on the style, if it's like more of a live sounding drum kit, I usually like put live drums on it. It was kind of more of like an R&B hip hop feel. Ah. Like gave it a little, you know, almost almost a trap high hat, but not full. It's feeling pretty good, okay. After that, I kind of came around to the bass. was like, all right, always gotta throw a nasty bass on it. And this bass is actually, a, it's actually my brother's bass. Our main like tour guys. His name's Diamond, and uh, they both just don't like this bass. They call it firewood, which basically means they want to burn it. <laughs> I think that just was like. You know, got a little funky with it. Put that in. Yeah, guitar, bass, together. <laughs> That's that's basically like right there you have the song. Everything else after that was just kind of like sprinkles on top. The main other part is probably this keyboard part. So it's just an old vintage keyboard that sounds really warm and honestly like this is like the go-to synth for us. Oh, always gotta put 808s. Just like what's going on? What's going on? Usually I won't put that. If I have like a live bass, like I'll try not to put like 808s because it's a little too muddy. Basically, towards the end of the song, I have both in, but whatever. It just kind of <laughs> became a party. Sometimes like I'll like go outside, like I'll have this. I'm like all right, sick. And I'll go outside. I'll take a, I'm gonna, an acoustic. Um, I'll kind of play the chords and just like sing shit and just see what feels right. And like I like record voice memos and whatnot. This is the the chorus lead. Oh, I could get this low. I could get this low for you. That's just the, the basic hook. I was like, damn, that feels pretty strong. So I'm gonna loop it like 75 times. <laughs> the pre-chorus, I did like some cool vocal effects shit. I did like. Then she fly away somehow. I got kind of fucked. Somehow. Up. Oh, I did some hilarious. This is like an Easter egg right here. It's like, you don't you don't get this often. But uh, on the second verse, I think I was just like fed up with everything at this point. So I was like doing some funny ass like ad lib backgrounds that are like, they're like some Migos backgrounds. This is what they are. 
Sometimes I wonder why I'm in this place. <laughs> and maybe I will never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can hear it like, like, okay, I'm gonna open it up on Spotify. Let's see if you can hear that. I don't even know if you can hear that. It's there. You can totally hear it. I'm in this place. And maybe I will never know. Anything that we didn't want to put in the house, we put in here. So, like, that's why there's like a random little frog. It's just like the most random things you'll ever find. When we first were like setting this up, the strings here, we gotta do something with it. I don't remember who said it, but it was just like, yo, let's just hang a disco ball on it. So, this is basically what this thing sounds like. Just makes like funny ass like elevator music type like I think I might have changed the tempo of it too. Oh you know what I put two? I put two in here. Do some cool chorus. Let's see what's going on. These guys right here. Never did I know I could get this low. I could get this low for you. Post chorus. That's the only other like affected thing I did. I did this like. I just bounced the chorus out, uh, brought like drug it back in the session, and then just chopped it up, like pitched it like one's an octave higher. And that's what that's what became the post chorus. It's actually like one of my favorite parts of the song now. That's definitely the best part, actually. I got like a hella fast arpeggiator. Comes in on the bridge and just goes throughout the rest of the song. It sounds sick, like it's kind of crazy, but I like I like that, I like the feel, like I put it in one ear. So you just, everything kind of sounds like. Sometimes I wonder why I'm in this place. And maybe I will never know But if I ever learn from my mistakes The future ain't predictable Majority of the song right there like laid out for, for whoever wants to peep it There's all the secrets right there Yo, thanks for watching How I Made Low And uh, see y'all next time Have a good day yeah. Never did I know